All right, welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Young. Today, we're gonna to be working on 9.2, the mean. Our standard is sixth grade statistics and probability A and B, and our objective is that we're gonna be able to find and interpret the mean of a data set. For mathematical literacy, we have statistical question, measure of center, measure of variation, mean, median, mode, range, and also the minimum and the maximum. All right, 9.2, the mean. Our success criteria is that we're gonna be able to explain how the mean summarizes a data set with a single number. We're also gonna be able to find the mean of a data set. And lastly, we're gonna be able to use the mean of a data set to answer a statistical question. All right, mathematical literacy. After a statistical question is asked, we have to collect all the data, all the information, okay? quantitatively and qualitatively. And all the numbers that are in the data are called a set. Once we have our set, we then have to describe and analyze that data. So we have the measures of central tendency. And this is a measure of uh, the central tendency. It is a measurement um, and it's represented as a single number, okay? And that single number uh, summarizes all the data set values, okay? Um, basically, it's, uh, it's so much easier to understand than trying to present all the data. So basically, the mean, the median, the mode, the range, um, that can all be represented with just one number. This is what we're saying. So let me explain furthermore. Now, uh, your grade point average, your GPA, that is a measure of central tendency for, all, for, for everything you have done for your entire grade from quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four for the entire academic school year, okay? Now, one form of uh, central tendency is a mean, okay? We're not talking about like when you're mad. We're talking about a number. We're talking about the average, okay? So we're talking about the mean there. And the mean is known as the arithmetic average and it is calculated uh, this calculation is cent the central value of a set of numbers. So here's how you calculate the mean. Uh, to calculate the mean, you add all of the numbers together and then divide them, uh, divide the entire sum by how many items there are. So if we look here, we have this data set, two plus three plus seven plus two plus nine plus one. Now, nine plus one equals 10, 7 plus 2 equals 9, 2 plus 3 equals 5, okay? Um, 10 plus 9 equals 19, and 5 plus 19 will equal 24. All right, so basically 24, I did the first step. I added all the numbers up, so we have 24. And again, we have to divide that by how many items there are. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six numbers. Well, that's going to be four. Okay. So four is going to equal the mean. Meaning that four is the average out of all these numbers. So again, step one to find the mean, you add all the numbers up. Okay. So we have 24. 2 plus 3 plus 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 1 equals 24. And we divide it by how many numbers there are. There are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 numbers. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. And that's going to be your average, the mean. The next type of central tendency is called the median. Now the median, this is the middle number of a data set when all the items are written in order from least to greatest, from the smallest to the largest. So that same data set that we had, three plus seven plus two plus nine plus one plus two, we're gonna put these in order from least to greatest, smallest to largest. Now one is the smallest number, plus two, plus two, plus three, plus seven, plus nine. Now, basically I took this whole data set here. This is called a data set. I took all the numbers from that data set and I listed them in order from the least, which is the smallest number to 
the greatest, which is the largest number, okay? Now remember, one's the smallest number and nine is the largest. So we had to find the number that is in the middle. So start from both ends, one and nine, okay? We're just gonna count the numbers. Here's one, two, all right? So we have two and then two and three are in the middle. Now we had to find the median, okay? So the median will be in between two and three. The number or the rational number that is in between two and three, if I have a number line, here's two and here's three. Well, in between two and three is gonna be two and a half, or two and three is gonna be two and a half. So let me show you by using arithmetic here. Now how you find right here, what if there are no, what if there is no middle number? Well, here's all you have to do. Add two plus three equals five and divide that by two. Okay, so if we have five in here and two there, two can go into five twice. Two times two equals four. Five take away four is one. So your quotient is two, that's your whole number. Your remainder is your numerator and okay so two uh your the divisor is going to be your denominator two and a half which is what we have there all right so your me median that is your the number that is in the middle is two and a half that is the median of that data set okay and same thing um if you just have these two numbers like there's no uh, median there well again just add them together 5 plus 3 equals 8 and there's two numbers there so I divide that by 2 2 can go into 8 four times 2 times 4 equals 8 8 uh, take away 8 equals 0 your quotient's 4 so for these uh, for this data set with 5 and 3 your me your median um, is going to be 4 right in the middle okay so again if we were to list them from 5 and 3 four would be right in the middle. All right. The next measure of central tendency is called the mode. And the mode is uh, an item in a data set that appears most often. Oh, uh, basically um, a mode is uh, the number that shows itself the most, okay? And it's okay to have one mode. It's also okay to have more than one mode. And it's also okay to have no mode at all. Okay, so a mode is the number that repeats itself in the data set. So again, we have two, three, seven, two, nine, and one. So if you want, you can list them in order from least to greatest. One's the smallest, then two, then three, or two, one, two, two, three, seven, nine. Now, if you look at our data set here, we just put them in order from least to greatest, by the way. If you look at this data set here, what number repeats itself? Well, two does. So the mode will equal two. There you go. Again, the mode is a number that it uh, the mode is a number that presents itself the most in a data set. All right, the next type of central tendency, measure of central tendency, is called the maximum and the minimum, and it's just as you heard. The maximum is the greatest value in a data set, or the largest value in a data set, and the minimum is the lowest value in the data set, or the smallest value in the data set. Okay. So if you look at our, our data set here, three, seven, two, nine, one, and two, what number is the smallest? One is the smallest number. Again, what number is the largest? Well, nine is the largest. So the maximum is the greatest value in the set. So the maximum is gonna equal nine. And the minimum, the lowest value in the set is gonna equal one. Okay, maximum equals nine and the minimum equals one. All right, the next measure of central tendency is the range. And the range is the difference between the minimum and the maximum unit in a data set. So um, 
the range equals the highest value minus the lowest value, the difference between the minimum and maximum unit in a data set. So imagine you and your friends um, wanted to find the range of money that you had. Um, so one friend had $5, another $20, $2, $10, $8, and $15. Out of this whole data set, um, the highest or the, the maximum amount is $20 minus the minimum amount uh, is two dollars maximum and the minimum now 20 take away 2 is going to be 18 so your range equals 18 all right the last thing I want to talk about is an outlier and an outlier is a value that lies outside it can be so much smaller or so much larger than most of the values in a set of data. For an example, two, three, seven, two, nine, and one, out of this whole data set, uh, I wanna represent this with a number line, the horizontal number line known as the x-axis. So here is zero, um, here is two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, um, one and nine. So if we were to, uh, let me graph these here. So if we were to graph those points on a number line, uh, two, one, two, three, seven, and nine, then the cluster would be here. But the outliers are seven and nine. But why? Because they are way out there. Okay, so there you go. That's what an outlier is. A value that lies outside the cluster and it can be much smaller or larger than most of the values in the set of data. All right, our first example, we're gonna find the mean. All right, so I'm gonna read the directions in the scenario here. So this table over here shows the number of text messages sent by a group of friends over uh, the duration of a week. And we want to know what is the mean number of messages sent. Is it A, 100, B, 102, C, 103, or D, 104? So it's going to be one of these answers. All right, so here's how you calculate the mean. Well, first of all, the mean is the average the average um, number of text messages uh, messages sent okay so the first one we have to calculate the mean is we have 120 uh, text messages sent by mark plus 95 text messages sent by laura plus 101 text messages sent by stacy plus 125 text messages sent by Josh plus 82 text messages sent by Kevin plus 108 text messages sent by Maria plus 90 text messages sent by Manny so to find the mean first you have to add all the uh, numbers together and then divide this is what this is it's a division bar divide by how many people there are so there's Mark, there's Laura, Stacy, Josh, Kevin, Maria, and Manny. So we're going to divide by seven people. And this is the number of text messages that are sent. So 120 plus 95 plus 101 plus 125 plus 82 plus 108 plus 90. That's going to be called the sum because we're adding the sum of the data, adding them all up. And that's going to equal um, 721, okay? And then we're going to divide by uh, 7 because there's 7 people. That's the number of values. And 721 divided by 7 is going to be 103. And 103 is going to equal the mean. That's going to equal the average, the number of text messages sent by this group of friends.
So your answer is C, 103. That is the mean. All right, with this next example, we're going to be comparing means. All right, so we have, uh, right in front of us, we have a double bar graph. And this is going to show the monthly rainfall amounts for Kayanta and Tuba City over a six-month period. So we're going to compare the mean uh, for both cities and get the, the average uh, for the monthly rainfalls. Okay, so in order to do this, first of all, step one, I have to add all of the uh, values together. So in other words, I find the sum. Okay. Step two, I then uh, divide by how many, um, I guess how many months there is. Okay. So I divide by how many. Okay. And that's basically it to find the mean. All right, I'm going to use a calculator for this one to help us out to move along a little faster. So we're going to compare Tuba City's uh, average monthly rain or average rainfall to Kayenta's uh, average rainfall. All right, so in reds, Kayenta, in green is Tuba City's um, colors. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. So. First, I have to add all the values together. So we're gonna look at all the, the bar graphs here. Uh, this, so we're gonna start with 3.5 plus 2.2 plus 1.9 for January plus 2.1 for February plus 2.5 for March. And I'm adding all the red ones first, plus 3.4. And my average for that is going to be so the mean equals 15.3 and i'm going to divide that by how many months november december january february march april by six months so 15.3 divided by six equals um, the mean will equal 2.55 inches of rain uh, okay for Kansas all right next I'm gonna do to the cities because everything in green so 1.7 plus 1.6 plus 2.2 plus 2.1 plus 2.7 plus 1.7 equals 12 so the mean equals 12 divided by 6 equals 2 all right okay so because 2.55 is greater than 2 we can say that um, Kienta has a higher average than two cities so what we did again was we compared the mean, the average uh, rainfall between the two different uh, towns. All right, so that's basically what you do. Add them all up, divide by however many there are, and since we're, com we're comparing two different towns, we did the same thing with the other, and we just compared that uh, information. All right, so that's basically it. All right, modeling real life. Okay, so here we have a table that shows the height of several Shetland ponies. Uh, we're going to describe how the outlier affects the mean. And then we're going to use the data to answer this statistical question. What is the height of a typical Shetland pony? All right. So here's our data set. One Shetland pony is 40 inches tall. Okay. Shetland pony heights in inches. One's 40 inches tall, 37 inches tall, 39 inches tall, 40 inches tall, 42 inches tall, so on and so forth. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten Shetland ponies. Now the first thing we want to do is graph this on a number line. Okay, I labeled it um, the height in inches. So 40, I'm going to go ahead and graph that here using a dot plot. 
and then 37, which would be here, 39, 40 again, 42, 38, 38, 37, 28, and 40 again. All right, so there we go. We have graphed the heights of the Shetland ponies on a horizontal number line, the x-axis. Now, if we look here, there's a cluster here. Okay, this is a cluster where they're all bunched together. Now, the outlier is the oddball, the one that's way out here. And the outlier is 28 inches tall, so this guy. Um, but we are asked to find, um, we want to describe how this outlier affects the mean. So let's first find the mean with all of the participants. So one Shetland pony is 40 inches tall, plus the other 37 inches tall, plus 39 inches tall, plus 40 inches tall, plus 42 inches tall, plus 38 inches tall, plus 38 inches tall, plus 37 inches tall, plus 28 inches tall, plus 40 inches tall equals. Um, 379 divided by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 divided by 10 equals um, 37 and a half inches. So the average Shetland pony with the outlier, so this is with the outlier mean. The, the average, the mean with the outlier, the average pony would be 37.9 inches tall. Now, we want to find, since the outlier is 28, we're going to kind of scribble out 28. And this time, we want to find the average height of the Shetland ponies without the outlier. Okay, so again, clear it out. So 40 inches tall plus 37 inches tall plus 39 inches tall, 40 inches tall plus 42 inches tall plus 38 inches tall plus 38 inches tall plus 37 inches tall plus 40 inches tall equals 351. Now easily if I had 379, I could have just subtracted 28. 351, right? But this time, without the outlier, there is two, four, six, seven, eight, nine ponies because we subtracted the outlier. So 351 divided by 9 equals 39. So if we don't have the outlier, then the average height of the Shetland ponies is 39 inches tall. All right. So that's basically it. So again, with the outlier, the mean is less than all, but three of the heights, okay? Um, but without the outlier, the mean, um, the mean better represents the heights. So the height of a typical Shetland pony is about 39 inches tall. All right, there we go. And once again, uh, by now, we should be able to explain how the mean summarizes a data set with a single number. Uh, we should also by now be able to find the mean of a data set and use that uh, mean of a data set to answer a statistical question. Again, make sure you reach out to ask your teachers for help and uh, always ask questions.